What's up y'all? I'm Tom and this is Like a Math Class. In this video we're going to talk about factoring trinomials. We're going to factor quadratics to be more specific. What we're going to do is we're going to start by seeing how is a quadratic expanded and found in, uh, put into what we call standard form and then we're going to work backwards from that standard form to see how do we get it back to what's called factored form. Let's get to it. In the introduction, I talked about a factored form and I talked about a standard form. And as you can determine, based on where I'm putting these, uh, these uh, this is the standard form and this is the factored form. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the factored form, we're gonna expand it, we're gonna use the distributive property, we're gonna get it to standard form. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that standard form and we're gonna move it back to factored form so we can see how these two things, uh, how this process works and why we do the process that we do. Let's start with our expansion of this using our distributive property. So we're gonna start with taking our red x out here and we're gonna multiply it by our x plus six. And then we're gonna take our red one and we're gonna multiply it by our x plus six. And what happens there is we take this x times this x and we're left with x squared we're gonna take this x times this six, and we're left with plus six x. We've got this one times x, we've got another one x, and then we've got one times six, which is plus six. When we simplify these two pieces together, we end up with x squared plus seven x plus six. Hey, what do you know? That's this thing right here. So how are we gonna work backwards to get from that standard form back to the factored form? Let's see how these different pieces were put together to create the standard form. The first thing we notice, or the hopefully the first thing that you notice, is that this n term, this six, this six right here, came from the product of this one and this six. And this seven, it came from the sum of this six times this x and this one times this x. This six x is from this x and this six, and this one x came from this one and this x. We are basically looking at what are the factors of six, what are the factors of six, the factors of six that add up to seven. So over here in the side margin, what I like to do is I'll say I've got the factors of six, what things multiply together, together to give me six. One times six does, and uh, two times three does. Now, which of these add together to get seven? Of course, it's this first one, right? It's this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this into two separate parts. I'm going to take this and I'm going to split it into one X and six X. And then I'm just going to carry down the rest of my information, my X squared and my six. So I'm going to look to see what is common between these two and what is common between these two. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, well, hey, look at here, this, these both have X's in them, so I'm gonna factor out that X. And then I'm left with, on the inside, X plus one, right? Because X times X is X squared, X times one is plus one. Now, what's common between these two values? Ah, I've got a six common between these two values. So I'm gonna pull out a six, and I'm left with X plus one. So six times X is six X, six times one is six, Hey, and what do you know? I've got my red and blue values, uh, same as right up here. So now I've got x plus six times x plus one. So here we go, look at that. We got right back to where we started. Yeah, these two things are flipped around, but we can see that that doesn't really matter because if you've got two times three, it's the same thing as three times two. It doesn't matter the order in which you're doing that if you're multiplying two things together. So as you notice what's happening here, here was our first, second, third, and fourth step, and if we were to start looking down here, hey, there's our first, second, third, and fourth step as we, as we work this way. So this would be like our first step, second step, third step, fourth step, right? We haven't done anything different here. All we did was here we went down this way, and now we're just working backwards. We're, we're basically going through the same exact process, we're just doing it in the opposite order. Um, so we haven't done a whole lot. This is why when you see me do the distributive property, I always break it into those two sets of parentheses. I don't use a lot of arrows to start with because I think it really helps us to see how do these things fit together. Um, but we can see that all of this stuff lines up exactly so. Um, and that's 
with intention. But what about something like this? What happens if we've got a number out in front here? Well, that does change things just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is we're going to use this kind of same idea up here, um, but I'm gonna change it up just a little bit. What we're going to do is we're gonna look at the factors of these two. If we look at three times negative 10, we're gonna have negative 30. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the factors of negative 30 that add up to negative 13. So we've got plus or minus one and plus or minus 30. So I'm looking at, because I've got a negative here, I've got to have positive one or negative 30 or negative one and positive 30. So what I'm doing this mental math for this, I'm thinking negative one plus 30, ah, that's going to be positive 29. Positive one and negative 30, ah, that's negative 29. That's not going to get me where I want to go. So then I look at my next factors, plus or minus two, plus or minus 15. So a positive two and a negative 15, that's gonna give me negative 13. Aha, there we go, negative 13. So what I'm going to, I'm gonna now split this into those two values, positive two X, negative 15 X. And then again, I'm gonna carry these other two pieces down. Now I'm again gonna to look to see what is common between these two and what is common between these two terms so here I've got 3x squared and 2x, so it looks like the only thing that's common is x, and what's gonna be left is x times something gives me 3x squared, so that's gotta be a 3x. And then a positive two, right? x times two is 2x, x times 3x is 3x squared. And then over here, I've got a minus five that's actually common between these two things. So if I take a minus five times something gives me this, three, uh, three X, and then minus five times something gives me negative 10, that's gonna be plus two. And here, here's something I didn't even mention before. This is how I know I'm doing this properly, is I need to make sure that my, my parentheses, when I factor out a couple pieces, I gotta make sure that those two parentheses are exactly the same because I'm distributing some values across the same set of parentheses, right? That's what I did up here, is when we factorize this, we are ultimately, when we look at this step here, we're taking this x and we're distributing it across this x plus six. We're taking this one and we're distributing it across this x plus six. So these things have to be the same. These things are the same. So when I'm looking at this here, this is my first clue. Am I doing this correctly? Have I factored out all the appropriate information that I need to? Because this needs to be the same as this. And then ultimately what I'm left with is x minus five times three x plus two. Now you're gonna to say to me, or you're thinking to yourself, now wait a minute, how did you get that three X? Why did you even include that three up there to begin with? Why, why are you doing this? Why didn't you do what are the factors of negative 10 that add up to negative 13? Well, first, there are no factors of negative 10 that add up to negative 13, but that's beside the point. The reason we're doing it is if we go back and we look at what happens if we are multiplying this? Let's even switch these around a little bit. If we've got three X plus two, and we've got X minus five, what we're doing is we're taking this three X, right? I'm just switching it around so we can see what's happening a little bit more with this three X. Um, so I'm gonna have three X, and that's gonna be times X minus five. And I'm gonna take this plus two, and I'm gonna multiply it by X minus five. So Ultimately, yes, our last term does come out to be negative 10, right? That's what we set up here. Hey, what values multiply together to get neg uh, positive six that add together to get seven? But also look, where does the middle X term come from? The middle X term comes from two times X. I'm gonna kind of work backwards here. Two times X, right? That's, that's these two pieces, boop, and this one here. But this other x here comes from 3x times negative five. So we've got 3x times negative five. And we're adding those two things together. That was a positive two to begin with. So that means this is actually uh, negative 15x plus 2x, which is our negative 13x. This negative 13 here, that this is actually coming from the product of the, the number in front of our x, what we often call our a value. The number in front of our x, this thing here, 
we often call that our A value. And the A value is used to find these middle terms. So if there is another number in front of here, that would also be used to, to, to have this, this piece in here. So when we're working through this, we're not actually just looking at we're not just actually looking at the end terms. We're not just looking at these things here. We've got all these imaginary ones inside here too. And the reason that I didn't show you that to begin with is because most people are like, why are you putting ones in there? Well, that makes no sense. That doesn't do anything for us. It's, it's, that's confusing. But hopefully you could see that if you've got a straightforward problem with no A value, you could just look at the 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 end term, and, and actually let's 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 define this a little bit further. We often call in standard form we say a x squared plus b x plus c, where our a value is here and always in front of the x squared. Our b value is what's always in front of the x, and our c value is what's always on the end. So if we look here, we had our a value already. Let's actually bring this down a little bit. We have our A value already yellow here, our B value is negative 13, and our C value here is negative 10. So we're not actually looking at just the C value, right? We're, we're looking at how do all of these pieces work together. That factor of negative 30 is at what adds up to here because that factor of negative 30 are what gives us 3 times negative 5 times 2. 3 times 5, negative 5 times 2 is negative 30. So most people, when they're trying to factor with that leading A value, they're like, why am I multiplying it by this negative 10? I don't understand that. But hopefully this helps you understand now that the, the, that the, the, the middle term, the B value term, comes from the A value times two factors of the C value. And that's why we use the, the A times the C to factor. I hope that helps. Give me a thumbs up and I'll talk to you in the next video.